Hi, I'm Rabbit Squirrel, and welcome to the Top 10 Line Writer Tracks of 2018, our third annual installment of this series. This year, we had a panel of nine judges and five reviewers, all of whom are artists or critics of some variety. As always, if you just want to watch the tracks and don't want to listen to us talk over them, click on the link to the playlist of tracks without commentary up above or down below. Alright, let's go! Number 10, Falling Through the Beat by iPi. Falling to the Beat is a technical track featuring incredibly impressive animation and movement-based musical expression. This track is notable for the novel and effective usage of isolated frame animation, where the rider moves so fast that each frame is completely separated from the previous frame, which enables the track maker to draw in lines that appear to be animated. This track accomplishes the incredible feat of having the animation actually interacting with the rider. This animation has a well-paced introduction, steadily increasing the amount of interaction until we have the animation appearing to draw track lines. The animation is focused, restrained, deliberate, and generally in good taste, though the perfect execution might make it look like post-reduction, which highlights the limitation of this technique. Besides the animation, the fluid, expressive, and highly controlled musically synchronized motion is very satisfying to watch. More development of this kind of motion with tighter sync will make for a great track on its own. The weakness of this track is the middle section, which is intended to demonstrate more techniques, but ends up breaking the flow and the synchronization to the music. Overall, while this track has satisfying movements and a great tech demo of animation, it ultimately lacks cohesion or greater development. Despite this, I still recommend watching for the sake of marveling at the impressive and clever animation. Number 9, Kitchen Sink by Gavin Roo 538 Gavin Roo 538 matches 21 Pilots' kitchen sink on many levels of phrasing and arrangement. In the beginning, each beat of the clinking percussion is matched with a collision. Later, every note of the falsetto vocals is seen in Bosch pivoting around the line. There's a satisfying bounce with each drum hit of the last buildup. At the same time as these beat level matches, Bosch is often also in sync with the higher level phrase those beats are a part of. The lines Bosch pivots around during the falsetto are changing under him after each go away. One level higher, as 21 pilots mark each section by changes in instrumentation, Gavin Roo 538 changes the scenery and the character of the ridden lines. Sustained vocals are seen in long, sweeping line arcs. A fast rap over sparse instrumentation is boss hurling from syllable to syllable in empty space. When sections are merged, like the one that puts the falsetto vocals over the drums from the beginning, Bosch's long sweeping lines are interspersed with quick drum hits. At the highest level of arrangement, as sections are revisited in the song with growing intensity, Gavin Roo 538 similarly heightens concepts introduced before. Lyrics are added, multiple background lines sweep with Bosch, a yell joins in. Clever transitions join the sections like an intense zoom and a trick fall. Each choice sounds simple when laid out, but each is a risk, and there are some misses too. The switch from highlighting clinking percussion to drums is confusing, the ending beat level line changes convey more energy than the backing track, and why not make Bosch's rotation in the intro match the pitch slide of the clinking percussion? But the innumerable hits show Gavin Roo 538's great artistic instincts and earn his track Kitchen Sink number 9 on this list. Number 8, Shortcuts by OTDE. Shortcuts is a track where the rider travels through a forest, a shortcut through a cave, and rolling hills to return to a familiar place. This track effectively blends together the traditional approach of scenery as landscape with the modern approach of music sync and choreographed movement. This track is notable for exploring several ideas with scenery while being grounded in scenery as landscape. Throughout the track, the scenery serves as a frame of reference to movement, enhancing the feeling of motion such that we get a visceral sense of velocity and freefall. This is especially prominent in the cave section. In the forest section, the track lines are deliberately drawn to be incorporated into the landscape. This makes the rider appear to be guided by free will rather than following an obvious prescribed path ubiquitous in scenery tracks. This effect is also used at the end of the track in the hill section. The slow speed of the forest section enables greater appreciation of the details of the trees and grass. The cave section features tight music sync with movements and visuals. Visuals for music sync are typically abstract, but this track uses natural cave scenery instead. And of course, the visual effect of the undulating hills is the real crowd pleaser. Overall, this is a cohesive, well-executed, and beautiful track that demonstrates how much you can accomplish with sparse scenery and makes the most out of the medium of Line Rider. I definitely recommend watching it. Number 7, Release Me by Andrew Hess. 
I'm gonna level with you. I love this track to death because I am an absolute sucker for something called Slow Burn. Release Me is a beautifully understated minimalist work that isn't afraid to present a simple, elegant idea and let you sit with it and really absorb it before moving on. Rather than building to any kind of dramatic climax, this work lulls you into a trance and washes over you. Release Me is full of visual ideas so simple and striking I can't believe they're original, such as a horizontal line appearing below Bosch on a kick drum and then Bosch dropping onto it on the snare, or restrained zigzags buzzing past Bosch to represent a guitar texture in the background, or curves drifting in and out of frame as Bosch manuals to a meditative guitar solo, or cymbal crashes being visualized by shrinking zigzags, or flickering manuals visualizing a more intense guitar timbre while still keeping Bosch's speed relatively low, and the movement simple, a consistent theme throughout the work. There's no sudden or sharp movements in Release Me or any major changes in speed, and this consistency of movement is what holds all the different sections of the track together. Release Me is an elegant, hypnotic work from one of the newest and most promising line writer artists, and I highly recommend checking it out. Number 6. The Wonder of You by Josh Hudson when no one else can understand me. In an extreme departure from much of his previous work of intense, hyper-technical virtuosic quirk, Josh Hudson, aka Sheldon, has returned from a long break with what may be the most emotionally heartwarming line render track of the year. It is also the first track I'm aware of to be created specifically for a marriage proposal, and it is beautifully done. The main feature of the work is the illustrated moments from Olivia and Josh's relationship, which are consistently drawn in a tasteful, minimalist style reminiscent of Commander Coke's Happily Ever After. These illustrations never lack clarity, but never get chaotic or cluttered, and the result is stunning. The track is similarly minimalist and tasteful, utilizing the aesthetic of a single long wavy line to hide track lines and manipulate Bosch to dance to the music. This technique becomes slightly overused towards the end when Bosch's movement becomes a bit jarring, but for most of the track it is elegant and effective. In the uploaded video, Olivia can be seen watching the track on camera and swelling with emotion as she recognizes various moments of their relationship in the track's illustrations, and it's incredibly touching. We can watch The Wonder of You ourselves and appreciate the craft and artistry, but we are always reminded that this track was created to express one person's love for another, and that's something truly beautiful. Oh, that one hasn't happened yet, huh? <laughs> Number 5. OK by Conundrummer. The 10-point cannon is an advanced line writer technique that allows the user to propel Bosch at any speed, in any direction, with any amount of rotation, at any time. OK. Like a supercomputer being used to calculate single-digit arithmetic over and over again, this virtually limitless trick has mostly been used to make Bosch go very fast suddenly. However, Conundrummer's latest, in OK, utilizes 10-point cannons in a way that both rebukes the speed-centric zeitgeist of the linewriter community writ large and carves out a new creative space of its own, offering an alternative to sudden, sharp, unorganized movement instead of merely critiquing it. The bouncy, repetitive structure of the track nevertheless manages to hold my attention because it can effectively play with its own rules. Like many of Conundrummer's tracks, this one also breaks a lot of long-held assumptions about how Bosch interacts with the world you've created for them. Maybe it's just from years of making line rider tracks in the same way, but when Bosch dismounts from the sled around the halfway point, I was shocked. Outside of a couple noteworthy tracks, like Cruise Control and Beethoven's Fifth, it's really rare to see a creator regard Bosch and their sled as separate elements. OK is funny, carefree, and manages to put an esoteric technique to use in an accessible, interesting little gem of a track. Okay. Number 4, Beethoven's Fifth by Doodle Chaos. After his wildly popular 2017 release Mountain King, Doodle Chaos has continued making music sync tracks in similar simplistic styles. By far the most innovative and entertaining of these is his most recent line writer release set to an abridged version of the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The second track to feature three distinct writers instead of the standard single writer, made possible by a closed beta build developed by David Liu, Beethoven's Fifth is packed full of exciting and creative moments that retain many of the same elements of Mountain King, such as the musical notation scenery, the focus on simplicity and accessibility, and the build to a dramatic and hilarious climax. But the addition of two more writers is utilized in new and innovative ways. From the simple touch of adding a heart to a romantic motif, to the shock of seeing one of the writers suddenly crash and fly off into an abyss, to the hilarity of seeing the body and sled return to fly across the screen at a dramatic moment, 
to the thrill of seeing one of the riders jumping over the crashed sleds of their fallen comrades like an obstacle course, this track is constantly finding new ways to entertain the viewer. It may not differ much from Mountain King stylistically, but with Beethoven's Fifth, Doodle Chaos has perfected his characteristic blend of accessible entertainment, drama, and comedy, and this earns Beethoven's Fifth the number four spot on this list. Number three, Ruby Falls by Rabbit Squirrel, OTDE, Opal, and Helios. The first major release from Rabbit Squirrel after the monumental This Will Destroy You, Ruby Falls surpasses the expectations set by its predecessor. With contributions from Opal, OTDE, and Helios, Rabbit Squirrel expertly conveys the variety of moods explored by the titular Guster song with a nuance and attention to detail second to none. The track begins with a laid-back section that uses manuals and limited quirk to evoke a sense of playfulness before moving into the guitar solo with which Rabbit popularized the dashed lines technique. In this section, line segments appear to grow, shrink, sway, and rotate to match the intensity of the electric guitar. After a dramatic section, visualized with high-speed movement and huge sweeping curves, there is an abrupt transition into a dramatically different second half of the track. During this calm, even ethereal second half, the viewer is lulled into a trance by the rider's effortless movement over smooth, undulating curves. The song continues with a muted trumpet solo, during which the rider moves with a playfulness and freedom that give the impression that the lines themselves are improvising along with the music, before concluding with an unexpectedly intense ending that'll have the viewer on the edge of their seat. Throughout the track, Rabbit Squirrel uses technically proficient manuals but always prioritizes capturing the mood and emotions of the music over showing off tricks and technique. Though the track reflects a variety of tonal shifts, none of these transitions feel jarring or out of place. With its technical proficiency, impeccable syncing, and its ability to evoke the wide variety of moods presented by the music, Ruby Falls has something for everyone to enjoy. Number 2. Bug Thief by Andrew Hess a cursory once-over of Igloo Ghost's discography will present you with a sonic landscape that is overwhelming, glittery, relentless, and constantly shifting. Bug Thief, a mid-year creation from a rising powerhouse of a track maker, manages to tastefully process and pare down hundreds of competing auditory voices into a surprisingly minimal but effective piece. Hess finds multiple ways to represent space in Bug Thief, and then somehow bends or contorts each of them, building on each with neatly executed twists. Great care is taken to ensure that each visual event in the track matches the texture of the sounds in the music. Clicking, low, staccato bass synths make the entire background warp in a stutter-step cadence. I really appreciate the difference in how Hess visualizes two different kinds of note sequences. For the squealing synths, there's this dashed line that rolls smoothly across the camera, while the lines used to represent the guitar licks are jangly, warbled, and move far more uncertainly. For me, this captures really effectively the difference in human involvement when playing these melodies, drawing a sharp contrast between program note sequences and those played by hand. This attention to detail is pervasive throughout the track, and as we watch every moment, Hess chooses some detail from the song to represent, and represents it cleanly without extraneous noise. It's like I'm watching the most noteworthy moments from the song curated in real time, and that's a rare and very difficult thing for a line writer creator to do. Bug Thief, simply put, is a masterclass in choice. Number 1. Sele by Ben Harvey, David Liu, and Sharon Pack. What do you get when you put incredibly advanced scenery techniques from someone who knows the guts of Linewriter's code base intimately and the visual direction of a professional artist and then put both of those in the hands of someone with a creative chutzpah to release a track clocking in at almost an hour? You get Sele, a tightly controlled geometric jungle of a track, pulsing with life and rhythm. This piece, commissioned by the German progressive house duo Superflu, powerfully embodies the spirit of the progressive house movement, using sterile, tessellating polygons to construct an organic, dynamically shifting environment, built in parallel to the way Superflu constructs the semblance of an acoustic progression through their arrangement of electronic sounds. The space-time animation applied to the track's background is positively humming with upbeat energy, creating a unique and striking parallax illusion that somehow still runs natively in any linewriter build. Sele is, in the simplest terms, a lot, and it's because of the consistency in visual direction that this track can read so effectively. The usage of just a few simple shapes allows the artists to develop an alphabet of sorts. 
a visual grammar that generates implicit expectations in the mind of the viewer. Sele's masterful use of setup and payoff, combined with its groundbreaking visual effects, make for an unprecedented moment in Line Rider track making history. Thanks so much for watching our picks for the top 10 Line Rider tracks of 2018. Go check all of these tracks out in the playlist in the description. While you're there, feel free to check out the documentation of the judging process to determine the top 10, and or buy us a coffee if you enjoy our video essays. We'll be back with more videos in 2019, so stay tuned.